Hello YouTube, today we got a uh, wonderful laptop called MSI MS-16V1 GS66 Stealth Let me open this guy up, I ah, can't even open it for some reason Well, because I forgot to put my gloves on Now this is uh, almost a bread and butter of this operation I never really fixed one of those before Similar ones I did fix, but this one it's called GS66 Stealth. There is a cooler boost, Trinity Plus, Thunderbolt, Steel Series, RGB. Basically, seems like a very expensive laptop because it got one terabyte NVMe chip. Wow. Eight gigabytes. So, anyways, and I like that it got the matte screen because I don't like anything that glossy, uh, causes the headache. Okay, so you know what, let me add some blue light here. Like that, all right. So the bread and butter of this operation is usually Lenovo laptops, uh, but MSI is the second place. Uh, partially because this is a 11.5 amps output. And unfortunately there is no, no connectors on the planet that can handle 11.5 amp output uh, most of them are made to be like 3 or 4 amps uh, so these connectors usually go bad because of the uh, extremely powerful power supply and unfortunately besides me nobody knows that uh, because nobody looks at the settings for the for the power connector which is uh, right here and my guess the people had to wiggle jiggle the plug to make it work so let's take it apart let's replace the connector um again i haven't fixed this particular model before the gs66 but i've seen a whole bunch of other msis in my life there is a thousand plus videos of different laptops uh that are fixed uh, on this channel so i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to fix it but i'm pretty sure 99% sure I should be able to fix it just fine. Alright, so this bit isn't the proper bit for this guy. Let's try let's try something less less pointy. Let's take a look. Nope. My understanding somebody was taking it apart before and they screwed it in extremely hard so okay all right so technically if you haven't torqued it like you yeah because the factory seal is broken somebody uh, looks like a mechanic used to take it apart before because everything is over torqued all right so let's So the reason sometimes it's not fixable is simply because somebody else would put their fingers into the laptop and short something out. So that's the reason why I'm saying it's usually an easy fix. MSIs are usually almost always work even if you put your fingers in there. Um, some, some other models don't really like to be touch but MSI usually makes um, MSI doesn't build any faults into their laptops intentionally let's just say that let's try and write this guy out all right Like that, like that, and like that, okay? Okay, good job. Excellent. All right, so this is all metal casing. I don't really like metal casings because they cause shortages on the motherboard all the time. So this is the connector right here. 
and I'm pretty sure it's broken. Let me disconnect the uh, the battery. Okay, let me show you like that. All right. So you want to disconnect the battery and make sure none of the screws are gonna fall onto the onto the motherboard. All right, we got one more right here. Black screws on the black plastic is kind of hard to see. All right, so we're gonna just pull the battery like that, and we're gonna slowly but surely pull out the cable like that, and set the battery aside. Alrighty, so if the video is gonna be useful, guys, don't forget to leave a like. Feel free to subscribe. I will let you know which are my top brands of the laptops and models. So this is my top brand, one of the top brands, because that's what keeps me in business. Um, Lenovo is another top brand because it also keeps me in business. Uh, but Lenovo's many times are not fixable, MSI's for the most part are fixable, because Lenovo sometimes builds their own stuff that breaks, and, but MSI are usually never really... MSI makes motherboards, but they usually never make something that not replaceable. Alright, so those are the two cables for the Wi-Fi. Now I probably want to disconnect the touchpad here. I don't think the keyboard is removable here, is it? No, keyboard is not removable. Right, so I have to disconnect the touchpad on this side, and I think this is the hinge right here. Now, if the quality isn't great on the video, it should be, because we record on 4K, and the quality should be 4K. Alright, so let's, let's try and get this guy out like that, okay. Now you do need to remove the expensive one terabyte uh, memory chip because there is a screw underneath it. All right, and then there is a thermal pad underneath it that holds it down. All right, you see the pad? Make sure you're not gonna lose that pad already now this screw we need to unscrew and that screw right here we need to unscrew all right so we got two screws out there's a whole bunch of uh, cables here that we need to unscrew there is something here that seems to be part of the part of the casing support of some sort. Now probably this guy and this guy. Again, this is the first time I'm taking it apart, so it's just my best guess. Maybe some of the screws you don't have to touch. Maybe you could just remove something easy here. I'm not sure about this screw, but I'm just gonna now this, this screw didn't really do anything, so let's put it back in. Yeah, okay. So don't unscrew that screw. There might be screws here and there. I'm not sure if this panel is part of the... It's hard to see if there are any screws underneath. But if I'm the MSI, I would probably put a screw there and put a screw there. I would force myself to remove the heatsink, which I almost always remove the heatsink. But if there is a way not to remove the heatsink, I would rather not, not remove the heatsink. So let's see if we can lift up this guy here. No, okay. So the thing is, we can't remove the heatsink because we got those Wi-Fi cables. I mean, we have to remove the heatsink because we got Wi-Fi cables running under the heatsink. And those guys are... And those guys are... are I can't really put them through right there because they're going to break the heads of those Wi-Fi connectors. So... The heatsink goes. 
By the way, this is a torque driver set to the lowest setting. So it doesn't over torque anything. All right, so we got three long screws here. We got uh, more screws right there. All right. Now, since we're removing the heatsink, we want to probably disconnect the cables here, like that. Like that, okay. Like that. And like that. Ooh, okay. So we got you more connectors here. That's one. That's two. All right. And this is the reason why we had to remove it. It turns out that this cable here is probably a useful cable, which we didn't want to break. So we're going to just set it like that. Oh, and we got another cable right there, which is also useful. I just say all cables are useful. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even see this guy being covered by the tape. Even though this is a studio, this is, should be everything bright in here. And this one is this hinge like that. All right. And again, the reason I show you all that so that you would be able to take it apart yourself. And if you decide you could send us just the motherboard, it's going to be cheaper. Just make sure the motherboard is coming in the box, not in the envelope. <laughs> And uh, sometimes you get international shipments and for international shipments, everything that goes back should go by regular mail because uh, so much problems when it comes to customs, especially to Canada or like British Virgin Islands, for example, everything kind of not working smoothly there when it comes to DHL or FedEx or UPS. So, and I mean on the international level when, when we ship something from the United States, so it's going to be by mail. All right, my understanding, there are cables underneath the motherboard. So you probably have to be extremely careful. This guy is being stuck right there. So you kind of have to guide it out. Now don't trip on anything. All right, so we got the, oh, okay, I see now. We got this cover right here. All right, it, it turns out that's a tape. I was thinking it's part of the motherboard. So black tape, yeah, good way. So they designed it so that you would not be able to take it apart easy. All right. It's a good thing I, I made the video of this repair because this is really not something that people can take apart without the guidance. So here. All right. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. And there is obviously sticky tape someplace there. Anyways, here. So if you send us just the motherboard, the prices are above. It depends on the inflation rate. Again, check the website before you ship it because um, who knows how, how long the inflation is going to be going for. And uh, yeah. All right. So here my concern is this plastic piece right here because if it melts, the fan won't run and the fan, fan won't run, then the whole system is not going to run. And that LED connection here. So I want to insulate it with the Captain tape. This is not the Captain tape. This is the 3M uh, high temperature tape, which supposedly, not supposedly, I mean, I use it all the time. 
I'll use it all the time. The time to prevent uh, components flying off the motherboard. But usually captain tape is enough, but I don't feel like spending the whole day here trying to correct things that got messed up, which shouldn't have gotten messed up. So like that, and like that, okay. So what I have here is a thermal insulation all around the jack. That way I can take this guy off of here. And again, it's hard to see if the jack is broken. I mean, the soldering joints are fine, but I know that it usually cracks right in the back of this piece. So there is a pin. There's a pin there right where it meets this guy in the rear. Right here, that's where it usually cracks. So when I'm going to be taking this connector off of the motherboard right now, you will see that the connector is going to come off, but, but the, this pin is going to be stuck in there, which I need to desolder separately. So that's the reason I will have to flip the motherboard and try and desolder the pin there. Now, all of the hot air are going to be blowing from this side, not from the other side. So that's the reason I only insulated the, you know what, I'm probably going to insulate the, the top side as well, because uh, I'm sure that that pin might give me some problems coming out. All right. All right, good job. All right, let's, let's begin. Well, before I'm going to begin, I want to clean up the heatsink and the GPU. Alrighty, so I cleaned up this guy, that guy, and the heatsink. Seems like somebody already took the heatsink off once before because there are two different thermal pastes on this guy. One of them came out easier, but the sides did not come out easier. Anyways, no big deal, I don't want to rub anything in because there are small capacitors on that NVIDIA chip, so you don't want to rub it anything here. We do get some melting on the CPU right here, as you can see, the melting points are right there. So the, the system is running hot um, for some reason. So maybe too much gaming. So as you can see, once this melting goes all the way around, the chip is going to be bad. This looks good. That guy also got some melting right there. Can you see the melting? Yeah, yeah, I should be able to see it now, like right now. You see on this chip and there you can see right now on that guy right there right here yeah uh, so anyways again thank you Lenovo or not Lenovo I mean MSI for keeping us in business so hopefully the CPU is fine hopefully the jack is bad so I will know right away once I take this guy off if the jack is bad and uh, let's let's see um, you might want to remove the, the touchpad cable so it wouldn't get twisted anywhere like that. Remove it for the shipping, you know what I want to, I would rather put it right here. All right. So yeah, ready to go. Um, if you box it up, make sure the box is at least this big. So that in case it bounces around, nothing would get damaged. Please remove the heatsink. Because heatsinks do bend the motherboard all the time. So if you ship us just the motherboard, box should be like that, like that. No envelopes, please. Alrighty, so this is a close-up of the jack. And you see soldering points are all in ideal shape. And the only thing is if you look inside, Right there, you see the blackness on that pin in the back? Let me point it out for you. Right there, inside. So that's where the crack is usually at, right? You see the blackness right there? And the blackness happens usually because of the, uh, because of the spark produced between the, the pin, right here, and this pin. And the spark happening, 
Let's see. Yeah, so this pin is moving back and forth and it's definitely not part of the jack anymore, you see? So it should be a part of it. Now on this side, you can't really see anything in terms of getting inside, but everything is soldered fine. So it's a physical damage to the connector that's not supposed to handle more than two or three amps. All right, so let's desolder this guy. I have an exhaust fan blowing full force. That's the reason the voice is muffled and that's the reason why the camera kind of shakes. It's an extremely sensitive 4K camera. So please excuse the, uh, the slight vibrations in the camera. I will try to... Eventually I will try to do a workaround from the fan blowing and uh, right now the hot air is going to blow as well and everything is going to shake here. So, but I mean, I don't have that shakiness here when I'm working. It just, the camera, the 4K camera reflects every single movement there is. So I started to notice that uh, when I'm watching the, the, uh, the videos. So what I'm doing here, I'm prepping right now for the work. So what I need to do first is we got this flux right here. I'm going to apply some flux. And then I'm going to add some of the leaded solder. The leaded solder going to mix with the unleaded solder and going to lower the melting temperature. We're going to power up some hot air. And we're going to add the a little solder right there, a little solder right here, more solder right there. For some reason I'm getting a backdraft on the solder fumes. Maybe the exhaust isn't working the way it should. Strange. That's the reason I had to lift up the motherboard. Alright, like that, like that. Did it come out? Yep, it came out without the top tip. Tip top. So as you can see I was right, right here. Right here is that tip that broke off in the back of the connection. Right here. All right, and so right now is a good time to desolder all of this solder from the holes. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove all of the solder from the holes so that I would be able to solder a new jack in place. Not sure how seriously the camera shakes. Alrighty. Looks excellent. All right. Alrighty, so that's the old connector. As you can see right there, 
where I was pointing out right there, right here, that piece supposed to go right there and then it goes into the motherboard. The motherboard is right here. This side is the motherboard. Here, let me point out. This side is the motherboard. This one's supposed to be right here, connecting to this connection there in the back. So that's the reason why you can't even see it. All right, so that's where it breaks off. But overall, the jack, uh, and there is no way you can just fix it up by adding solder someplace. You have to replace the whole new jack. And that's the reason why we are in business. Looks good? Wow. Looks, yeah, I should put, I, as soon as I remove that thing on the left, that comes with the microscope. Yeah, so this is the piece right here, this guy, right here. All right, so let me go find this replacement connector like that. Hopefully I have one of those, I'm pretty sure I do. Uh, we got, by the way, all of them in stock. You could buy it from the link below. We ship internationally, anywhere, basically. Um, so yeah, the link should be below where you could buy one of those. Alrighty, so we got the brand new piece. You see the, uh, the leg is attached right there. It's exactly the same connector. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of this insulation. Because we don't really need it. When you're removing the insulation, make sure that none of the components came off the motherboard and got stuck to the tape side of the insulation. Because the insulation has some tape on it. And if everything is clear, you're good to go. If something got stuck to the insulation, it got desoldered from the motherboard. Alright, so it's gonna sit like that. And here what we're gonna do is add some flux. Alright. And we're gonna... By the way, the fluxes we use, the solder we use, everything should be... Uh, should be at one of the links below. Alright, so here. Alright, first I like to just solder a little bit on the top. On the top. Alright. Yeah. All right. And now, once it's all nice and stable, what I want to do is I want to solder the bottom. Again, the flux is all there. All right, the flux is all right here. Okay. All right. And what I want to do here is I want to just solder the rear pin on this side. All right. More on the sides and a little bit here in the back. Right there. All right, so we didn't really solder the negative component really well. So let me add more flux and try and solder the rear pin a bit more. Okay. Yeah, so that's where the problem lies. All right, so what MSI does here, they make a motherboard that sucks all the heat inside. Okay, so what I did, I did a bridge on the rear two pins. Right here. I will show you in a second. And that bridge supposed to 
I'll conduct the negative negative part of the current through the motherboard here just fine because two pins are going to be attached to the motherboard I put some 99% alcohol here to clean it up so that nothing would be oxidating All right, looks wonderful. Yeah, looks wonderful here. I'm gonna use the microscope to make sure that everything did get soldered flawlessly. But the thing is, I will see this laptop here in about a year because, um, well, because <laughs> obviously because uh, the connectors are not made, those 3M connectors are not made to handle a lot. So once they get hot, they get broken really easily. Let's put it under the microscope. All right, you know what? Let's remove all of the all of the garbage. Let's put it under the microscope. All righty. You can see that the rear pin is soldered just fine from the top. You can see that extra stuff. You can see the negative pin is also soldered from the top to the motherboard. Right? Yeah, looks really good. But you see, because, because you can't really solder really well here because you have to heat up the motherboard seriously. And you got this component in a way. So. I did as much solder as possible here, but what I did to make sure that everything is going to work peachy, what I did was, uh, this seems like a little bit high. You can see this bulb connecting the two rear pins on purpose, on purpose so that uh, So that uh, the negative part, this is the negative, this is the positive. So that the negative part will be here and here. Positive just goes from this pin here and goes all over the motherboard. All right, so I guess this is the part three of basically how we're gonna assemble it back. And the way to assemble it back is to put this guy in first. MB is the motherboard side. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna get a whole bunch of red stuff on this bench like that. Okay. All right, let's bring the. So, technically, if nobody did anything drastic to this motherboard prior to us, everything should be okay be okay all right so let's put this guy in here all right there is a there is a sticky tape which doesn't allow me to. All right. I believe this is the right way, right? Looks like the right way, yeah. And there's no other way around here. So go in there. Okay, let's close this guy down. Let's flip this guy over. Let's make sure this guy is this way. Drop this guy right there. All those guys like that. This guy right here. Do. Do. Okay. All right. So not gonna work because this guy is glued to the keyboard right there. So what I need to do is I need to unglue it. It will have more room to go. 
Now we want to connect this guy here. Okay. Wonderful. Like that. Like that. Okay. Yeah, this guy is also sticky here and putting it in under 90 degree angle because it gets stuck exactly right here where it's supposed to kind of slide but it doesn't. Here, let me put this guy in there. Let me guide it using the screwdriver. Okay, like that. Close this guy down like that. And now we put it on a sticky pad. All right. All right. Oh, well done. All right. This guy right here is not all right. Yeah, don't forget this cable. It's probably your sound and the video. Okay, so we, this we can put like that, like that, like that. Turn it on. Turn it. All right, so make sure the hole aligns with the plug right there. Let's probably a good time to connect this guy right here. And this guy right there. All right. Good job. And this is going to go like that. Okay, looks good to me. So we got memory chip here. Another memory chip right there. Good job. Yeah, make sure that everything aligns perfectly fine. The problem on those, I see that the keyboard cable, you see how it's bent right there because of this plastic thing right here. Sometimes the keyboard cable might stop working because it bent too much because the board sits on top of it. So this is just a general design flow, right? General design flow because it's aluminum. General design flow, it has too much voltage going through here. The motherboard is uh, extremely high temperature, just like uh, Apple product. Not just like, but similar to Apple product, uh, where it dissipates heat really easily. And um, even though that's a good thing, but in general, uh, some, some components while being soldered at the manufacturer don't get soldered as well. That's one of the things that could happen here. All right, so let me put thermal paste right here and thermal paste right there. Put the heat sink back on top and be, well, pretty much assemble the rest. All right, so. Okay. All right. All right. So you want to spread evenly the thermal paste so that every single part of the chip going to be covered. That way there's not going to be overheating on one and more than on the other. So I'm confident that this thing going to be bit more because again it's custom 
custom, my friends. All right, so here we got this guy right here, which is gonna be right there. In my understanding, this goes like that, like that. It's just really not pleasant to to remove those cables when the whole thing is sitting there. All right, so like that, I mean, yeah, I mean, unless you're taking the whole thing apart, you probably want to put this guy in there as well because it's much easier to do it now. Okay. All right, we want to put the cable out a little bit. All right, so we're just going to drop this guy like that. Okay, so something isn't right. Something isn't right because those cables need to be in this little, tiny, little, tiny channel. And they need to be guided out like that. And those cables need to be like that. And like that, like that, like that. Okay. Good job. Okay? Okay. Well, not good job. Yeah. Okay, like that. So I'm not really screwing everything down all the way, I'm just putting the screws in so that everything would align fine. Because as soon as I would try to screw everything down, things won't be aligning the way I want them to align. Alright, so here is another one. Okay. All right. Okay. Those are the long screws right here, right there, and probably right here. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For some reason this is probably going to be coming from the top. This guy. All right. Anyways, let me screw this guy in that guy in all right so don't over torque anything here otherwise you're gonna break the nut where it's all soldering to so i think i'm relatively happy here okay let's put this guy like that this guy like that all right this we can put in later Oops. Okay, like that. Okay, my understanding this was like that. This was like that, yep. Yeah, a lot of engineering goes in here, but uh, no experience, so to speak. I understand, I mean, people are coming and go, uh, so there is a flow, flow of people who know stuff in and out of the company, so, yeah, this guy here, like that, I'm talking about MSI company, anyways, and we got this guy here, alrighty, oh, you know what, I forgot to put a screw right there, so this is a screw going in here. There should be another screw going in right there. 
just the little list up just the little list up okay 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 so let's put this guy right there okay this is gonna be like that now we're gonna put whatever this bracket is this bracket probably made so that the top cover won't be touching the 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 motherboard because when you squeeze the cover too much uh, the the motherboard will get touched and then and then you will have a shortage on the motherboard and that's the reason we got this guy right here it prevents the top cover so but if you squeeze it here or there then you're still kind of done let's remove some extra dust right here from the area here you know what i forgot to measure the the continuity here all right plus is fine minus is 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 hold on one second here then then okay that's how it's supposed to be working all right so minus is fine and plus is fine all right good job okay seems like uh Seems like we only have the battery screws left. And the battery goes right here. Make sure you're not gonna lose that that piece right there. That's what holds the uh, touchpad. So if your touchpad is gonna be wobbly, it's because that piece isn't properly screwed in. So it's a similar to GS. Uh, uh, GS um, 65 I think model but GS 65 and 66 don't really have much in common as it turns out I was expecting a more similar product right, so here we got screw here screw right there this is called GTAC technology Conchan the battery BTY M6M those of you who are looking to replace the looking to replace now that screw is not from here definitely not from here hmm. let me see the whole layout here so we got one two three four five so you have to have a screw there you know what i don't want to put a longer screw through hole that requires a smaller screw so I'm gonna match up something smaller and put something smaller in there all right so this looks like small enough yeah okay good job good job so here we're gonna connect this guy here all right then we're gonna drop it down there all right this isn't going anywhere we're gonna just take that cover like that okay let's put the cover back on top oh yeah we got something here that's probably supposed to grab onto this guy maybe maybe not but we will see all right so you see how hard it is to clean to keep everything clean because everything is really as uh, all right so something isn't the way i want it to work so let's see maybe we have to put these guys in there first 
like that, like that, and this one right here. Okay. All right, let's go. Now this tiny screw goes in here. Tiny thin screw goes right here in the front. All right, the bigger screws are going into the bed, assuming there are space in there. All right. And another one goes right there. Goes right there. Here. Right there. All right, so basically we got uh, one screw missing. All right, but that's how we received it. Let me find a similar screw. Let's see if this one is going to fit. No, nope, that's too short. All righty. This head is probably too big. Yeah, the head is going to be sticking out. <laughs> okay, so this one looks... Let's see, the head should look like... Okay. Let's take this one with the head out. And let's put this one in. Okay, looks beautiful. Now the moment of truth. Let's open this guy up. Stuff. And let's connect the power supply. Again, the power supply is 11 10. Let's see. Now let me measure the voltage at the power supply first. So that in case nothing gonna work, I will know that it's the power supply fault. Yeah, okay, so we got the voltage, 20 volts. Let's see if we wiggle the plug. Sometimes when you wiggle it too much, sometimes right here where the problem happens. So, but here it's hard to say if the plug is bad because you have to kind of hold this stuff together. All right, probably should be okay. Probably should be okay. All right, so let's plug this guy in. So hit the camera. All right, so are we gonna have any lights in here? Is the power supply power? Okay, so we got the light right here on the side. Let me show you that we got the light on the side. Right there white light okay and let's power up the system and we should get something like a dragon flying or something yeah thank you msi for putting food on my table today i really appreciate the steel series and i appreciate everyone who is buying who has so much money to buy laptops like that all right so you see everything works so i don't want to any clients information here let's see right here lowest is this space wow one terabyte is lowest is this space all right let me see that the battery is charging fine come on yeah so we got 83 percent right there on the battery and the sign show plug-in charging we're gonna unplug it and we're gonna plug it you see the the light went out the the fork thingy went out now we plug it back in and the fork is there the plug so one more time look right there right there now what we want to do is we want to wiggle it around see that everything is peachy all right so that's that i'm gonna check the sound the touch but thanks so much for watching and please leave a like, subscribe, and you guys take care and have a good day. Thanks. Bye.